One of the challenges of digital photography is capturing what you actually saw. A lot of the time the image that you get on your computer won't look like what you saw out in the field. And this is especially true of things that are brightly lit, landscapes and things like that, because the meter is seeing what's in the center of focus and the rest of the image is getting blown out. It's a little too bright. So I want to show you a quick way to correct that using Photoshop. We're actually going to use Camera Raw, which is a very friendly inroad to Photoshop, but I want to show you how to use it on your non-raw files. So here we are in Bridge, and this allows us to see our files, and we see that we've got a DNG, or RAW file, on the left. We've got another RAW file in the middle, and then we've got a JPEG on the right. And the reason I put this JPEG here is for all of you who are not shooting RAW but want to enjoy the benefits of a RAW workflow. So a couple ways to do this. One, I can select the JPEG file and just hit Command-R, and that'll pop me into this really friendly and powerful place to interact with my images. The other way to do it would be to come into the Camera Raw Preferences here and just tell it to automatically open all supported JPEGs or all supported TIFFs. Over in Photoshop, the workflow is similar. I come over to my Preferences and File Handling, and there's a button for Camera Raw Preferences. And again, automatically open all supported JPEGs or TIFFs. Okay, so let's look at that JPEG file in Camera Raw and look at what we can do uniquely around darkening the sky and the foreground of the image. I'm going to hit Command R and I'm going to grab my graduated filter. I'm going to hold the Shift key so that it keeps that straight as I drag it down. The green at the top is where the effect begins, the red is where it stops, and in between it's graduated. I'm just going to pull the exposure over to darken it. I'm going to pull Highlight over to recover some of the highlight information. I'm going to pull Clarity to the right to increase the mid-tone contrast. I'm going to add a little bit of saturation. And down here at the bottom where it says Color, I can even override the color. So you see I've got a really bright, splashy blue there. Now in this particular case, the sky looks great, but now I want to change the foreground. So I'm just going to hold the Shift key again and add another graduated area. And you can see it's taking the parameters of our last one. So I want to make a few changes. I don't want that quite as dark. Maybe I want to brighten some of the shadows, pull down the saturation a bit, and I'd probably like a warmer tone in my foreground. So if I toggle my preview, I can see I've dramatically changed the image and it looks great. If I were to hit Open Image, that would open into Photoshop. If I hit Done, the changes will be reflected back in Bridge. Now let's look at a slightly more difficult image. With this one, I'm going to have trouble if I pull the graduated filter down because I need to darken the image all over. And that's going to eventually overlap the house. So that's not going to work. I'm going to just hit delete and undo that. And I'm going to use this new option, which is the radial filter. And I'm just going to drag an area about the size of what I want, grab it and move it over. And it's the same principle. I can darken the area outside of it. I can add clarity. You see it's using the values we added before. I can increase saturation. I can override the color or just turn that off entirely. And if I toggle the preview here, we can see we have a much different image. Again, when I'm done, I just click Done. And if we go back to Bridge, we'll see that reflected in there. Camera Raw is great for all sorts of things. It's fast, it's powerful, it's non-destructive. Anything you do to one file, you can share with another. But as you can see for graduated filters or radiated filters, it's really easy to make the images that you shot look like what you saw.